So why on earth would you choose a Sportster over the Big Twin? Well, I did. Ah, let's get out of here before the before the park ranger comes. Probably not supposed to be in here. Yeah, we didn't get busted. <laughs> we escaped. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Okay, so back to what I was saying since I got distracted there. Why on earth would anybody choose a Sportster over a big twin? I mean, come on. Got it. Bigger's better, right? Well, in a lot of cases, I would agree. I'm not saying the Sportster's any better, but the Sportster motor, from what I've been able to find, it doesn't really have any, it doesn't have any known issues. Well, other than the uh, oil pump drive gear, which if you start hopping them up, they, uh, they tend to get sharp and come apart and go into the motor, but that's only if you start messing with it. <laughs> if you leave it alone, it'll be fine. <laughs> I guess what my mom always told me, leave it alone and it'll be fine. <laughs> but anyways, guys, so with the twin cam motor, before that Milwaukee 8 come out with the four valve head, well, when I bought this bike back in 2016, that was really your only option. That was the only motor. Now, that engine wasn't bad, but I, I'd always heard that it ran extremely hot. I know, cliche, air-cooled motor runs hot. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Hell, this thing runs hot, but the twin cam ran extremely hot. Now, I'm not knocking the twin cam. I say it's a good motor and everything, but it does have an underlying problem. It is the cam chains and that tensioner. Now, they've made it better. It is better than it was. After the 88-inch motor, they did away with the uh, with the spring. They did away with that spring on there, that spring tensioner, and they put a hydraulic tensioner in. Well, that's good. I mean, it's an improvement, but it doesn't necessarily completely solve the problem. You still want to keep an eye on those dudes because you have one of those tensioner shoes come apart it's a party in the motor that thing is going to go right through everything it's going to clog up oil passages and things are going to run dry at highway speed and it's going to be a really really bad day and it's going to be very very expensive <laughs> so when i as soon as i heard that it really kind of turned me off from getting a big twin model and dang it i, I was really set on a low rider too at the time i really like that road that low rider just I was new to Harley Davidson and I didn't feel like I was very comfortable working on them because well obvious reasons I didn't know anything about them <laughs> but now that I've learned a little bit about them I wouldn't be afraid to get into one and actually check it or replace those tensioner shoes on that twin cam <laughs> let's see where this goes I don't want to ride into the sun but I guess I don't have a choice ah here comes a car Had to get away! Get away! <laughs> run away! Run away! <laughs> yeah, so... Also... Ooh, motorcycle! <laughs> you got apes! I like apes! <laughs> but another issue that I became aware of on the twin cam motor was the compensator on it. They'd have issues where they tend to kind of come apart and the bike runs like crap and makes all kinds of noise. Now, I'm not saying that is every twin cam motor. Because, don't get me wrong, there's tons of twin cams out there that have got 100,000 miles on them that have never even been touched once. Which is awesome, you know? I mean, it's, I think it's great, you know, that Harley actually builds an antique motor that can actually put some miles on like that. Oh, dang! <laughs> got road tore up. Oh, what's this? <laughs> got seen her! <laughs> Better stay out of there. <laughs> I go in and try to win a big twin and come out with no twin. <laughs> oh, guess I better go this way. <laughs> but like I mentioned earlier, the obvious difference as to why somebody might buy a Sportster would be the price. I mean, I think brand new is... Oh, motorcycle! <laughs> I almost missed that one. <laughs> I'm never going to get this video done at this rate. <laughs> so, the other thing that was kind of brought to my attention, just kind of looking over some things, was... I know you don't have to change the belt very often. Um, if it's well taken care of, 100,000 miles is not uncommon. 
given you don't pick up a rock and shred it or something weird like something like that happens it's that's kind of what a oh motorcycle oh what i'd like to have man that kind of reminds me of my old one dang man i gotta get out of here i keep getting distracted <laughs> change that belt on a on a on a big twin it's a lot more involved than it is on the sportster because you gotta basically pull the whole primary off to get down to it on the sportster it's pretty open and free over on that right hand side there it's a little cost savings there now there are some trivial things as to why you might choose a sportster they don't take as much oil you use a lot less you use a little less oil when you're servicing them dang it on a motorcycle <laughs> So another another point on on a Sportster, Sportsters also they I always thought that Harley Davidson really underrated their advertised horsepower on these bikes. Well, Harley Davidson doesn't advertise horsepower, but they only advertise torque, which I can't blame them. Their horsepower they produce a lot more torque than they do horsepower. The Sportster. I know, well, not so much now, but back in the days of the 88 and the Evo, the Sportster would really put to shame a big twin in the horsepower numbers. They really could pretty easily. And that's not good for business. <laughs> you try to sell people on a big expensive bike with a little box. <laughs> you know, it's just not good by the numbers. 